At Jansanese in Sagvog, boats have been built as long as people can remember. At one point there was as many as seven shipyards. Fairings, sloops and sailing vessels in all sizes were built here. The fairing, suited both for rowing and sailing, has two pairs of oars. Six men are about to learn how to build a fairing. With them is Olaf, an experienced shipwright. For some time now they have all been gathering material. They need oak for the keel and stems, wide boards of pine for the strakes, and copper rivets for the lapping of the strakes. The tools are important. The axe must be sharp, and Jostein knows how. If the axe is not sharp, it must be sharpened. And the chisel has to be sharp too. Olav makes sure the planer is adjusted correctly. Then you need clamps, as these boards are wide. The first task for the men is to make a jig, or a frame for the fairing. At the bottom we have the lower jig board, and above the upper. These temporary boards are used to position and adjust the flare on the strakes with temporary trusses. Now the real work begins. We start with the oak stem and identical stern post. These are roughly cut on the bandsaw. The stem and stern post are made out of two pieces of oak, glued together and strengthened with copper rivets. When the posts have been beveled and sanded, they will be joined to the keel. Good results are gained with good craftsmanship and the appropriate tools. Next comes the oak keel. The keel has been shaped to a T profile and will be joined to the stem and stern post. They cut the keel and post to an angle so to make a good joint. They glue and rivet them together to give strength. Was the joining of post and keel done correctly? This is important for the remaining work. The keel needs adjusting. Every millimetre counts. Now they can position and fasten the joint posts and keel onto the jig. The basis for the fairing has been done. A line of string is being stretched between the two points on the stem and stern post. This line is the guideline for the work ahead. Before they make the final fastening of the keel and posts, they use a plumb line to make sure they are both vertical and in line with each other. A level guarantees a horizontal water line. Nice broad boards of pine are ready for use. They start with beveling the board ends, the first and short part of the lowermost boards at stem and stern. These short strake ends are drawn out with the help of a template and roughly cut on the bandsaw. They have been steamed and bent into the correct flare, a shape enabling the fairing to cut through the sea with ease. The short strakes of the usalva are cut with an axe and not steamed. Then you get accustomed to how to use an axe. Beveling with a planer gives the board ends a slender and even cut. The short strake is in position and the trusses force the strakes into the correct position. At this stage the decision will be made if the boat is to carry cargo or be swift and easy to row. Olaf has the experience and explains to his pupils how it has to be done. The strakes on the port and starboard sides have to have the identical distance to the centre line. This is where the guideline comes in handy. We call it sewing the strake. In spite of the fact that we no longer sew the boards together, we now use stainless screws. To join the strakes to the keel, we use copper rivets. 
With the short strakes in place, the men can start on the first strake, the garboard. They must be adjusted all the way along between the stem and stern post. Between the short strake and the garboard, they make an angle end cut so the boards can overlap each other. That turned out really well and the bottom boards can be fastened with copper rivets. The first strake is done. On top of each strake, they bevel a long groove using a profiled planer. This makes a nice trimming. In the old times, this trim would be every shipwright's signature and you could tell exactly who built that boat. Next round is the washboard. It too must be beveled even and slender. These days we have machine planers to do this kind of work. The washboard is done. But how is it really supposed to be assembled? The angle end cut must be done with an axe. The joint must be accurate. The washboard is cut with an axe on the upper edge to receive the next board. And now they're ready for the next strike. This type of fairing is called a Strandebarmer and has four strakes on each side. The Usalva has only three and therefore needs wider boards. The last strake is called sex board. Beautifully joined at the stem, just like a wooden sculpture. The clamps holding the boards in position are made of aspen. The trusses are there only to help adjust the strakes. They are important to hold the boards in place and position them according to the correct measurements. By measuring from the guideline down, they can check that the measurements on the boat correspond with the drawing, but they also have to measure by sight. When it comes to boat building, that is just as important. Now the sax boards on each side have been riveted. To obtain a good seal between the strakes, they use cotton line dipped in linseed oil. This is done before the riveting takes place. Here they drill a hole in the stem for the copper rivet. A long life metal that will not rust. They position the rivet. Supporting behind, they hammer it through. The tip is cut off with a pair of pliers. Now they can rivet the seam flat and tight. Somebody must support from behind, not pushing too hard nor too lightly. Perfect! A well riveted seam is important. If the seam rivet is sharply edged, the nets will get caught and tear. Many a shipwright has ended up with bad hearing. Better be careful and use ear protection. On the fairing, the frames are assembled at the end of the work, contrary to all other boat building. Therefore, the undersides have to be shaped in accordance with the shape of the hull. This is done with the help of an adjustable template. The shape is transferred to suitable piece of planking. Rough cutting done on the bandsaw. Will it fit? The bandsaw cuts it to its final shape.
More adjusting and sanding before the final assembly. The moment of truth. Phew, it fits like a glove. The frames are riveted to the strakes. Note the drain hole above the keel. The hammer used for clinking is small, but the professional shipwrights can do a rivet in three goes. Here's the material for the part that crosses the frame. It is made from a single branch of pine, a piece of art made by eyesight. The piece is put together out of two parts. Cut at angle and riveted together. The thwart lies on top. The fore and aft frame is made out of one piece and must have a 90 degree angle. The person who finds the best suitable route for this job is a star. They first make a template. Trace it out and then cut both end frames out of the same chunk of root. It's important to make best use possible out of the wood available. The aft frame and the last drake, the saxon, is complete. We are nearly done. Before the fore and aft frame can be riveted, the outer gunwale has to be fastened. First, a final bevel with the planer. The inner gunwale is fastened. It's a good idea to have an extra hand. Or more. They fasten a third strip on the outside. Note the nice shape on the strake and gunwale. When all is assembled, the final measurements from the keel to the gunwale are marked off to the given distances. Finally, the top side is beveled down to the markings. The fastening of gunwale and post has to be strengthened. The day has arrived when the boat is carried out of the workshop. All that's left is an empty jig. Is there anything more beautiful? Like two swans on a lake. Slender new boats made the traditional way out of wood. <laughs>